This battery stands an astonishing 145 meters tall and stores energy using gravity. Sounds crazy? Maybe, but the concept is rock solid. I covered this topic in a video three years ago when it was just an ambitious prototype. Now, a Swiss startup has brought that vision to life, building the world's largest gravity battery in China. It stores and releases energy by moving massive blocks, and the tech has evolved impressively. Let's break down how it works, what's been improved, and what challenges still lie ahead. The company behind this innovation is called Energy Vault. Back in 2019, they built a prototype in Switzerland to test their gravity-based energy storage solution. The idea is simple and rooted in physics. When there's excess electricity, like from wind or solar farms, it's used to lift heavy blocks into the air, converting electrical energy into potential energy. Remember your high school physics? The formula for potential energy is mass times gravity times height. So the heavier the blocks and the taller the tower, the more energy can be stored. Later, when energy is needed, the blocks are lowered, converting potential energy into kinetic energy, which drives generators to produce electricity. Essentially, a gravity battery works just like a pumped hydro storage system, only instead of using water, it uses giant blocks. And here's the big advantage. It doesn't need rivers, lakes, or mountainous terrain to operate. That means gravity batteries can be deployed in many more places around the world. What's especially exciting is that Energy Vault didn't just disappear like many startups do. They expanded massively. They partnered with some of the world's biggest utility companies and, with support from the Chinese government, they now have nine gravity battery projects planned across China. Combined, these systems will provide an enormous 3.7 gigawatt hours of storage capacity. Some projects are under construction, and one is already completed. The total contract value? A billion dollars, with $50 million in equity investment included. And this isn't just some flashy headline. The completed project in Rudong near Shanghai is a full-scale, commercially operating system. It's located next to a wind farm and is connected to the national power grid. Unlike the early prototype, this system doesn't rely on concrete blocks. Instead, it uses recycled materials like construction debris and decommissioned wind turbine blades. That's a big deal. Early versions were criticized for relying on environmentally unfriendly materials. By using waste, the new version dramatically improves its ecological footprint. According to various reports, the facility in China uses around 3,500 blocks, each weighing 25 tons. Though the company hasn't officially confirmed those numbers, a press release from one of their partners mentioned over 12,000 blocks. The battery can deliver 25 megawatts of power and store up to 100 megawatt hours. That's enough to power over 10,000 households for an entire day. It takes between 4 and 24 hours to discharge completely depending on demand. Energy Vault claims a round-trip efficiency of over 80%, putting it on par with other leading energy storage methods. And its expected lifespan? A whopping 35 years. That's far longer than chemical batteries, which degrade over time. Because the system is mechanical, not chemical, it avoids issues like capacity loss over time and toxic waste production. Plus, its recycled materials make it even more environmentally friendly. And since it doesn't need special terrain, it can be built in cities, deserts, or remote rural areas. It even works in extreme temperatures from minus 15 degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius, broadening its usability even further. But let's not get carried away. There are still important questions. For one, there's a surprising lack of independent data. Most of what we know comes directly from the company. I couldn't find any third-party studies or peer-reviewed papers validating the system's efficiency or capacity. That's concerning. There also hasn't been a major update from Energy Vault in over a year. The company mainly shares posts on LinkedIn, but not much detailed technical information. In fact, when I reach out with questions, multiple times through different channels, they initially responded, promising to get back to me. But then... Radio silence. That doesn't necessarily mean something's wrong, but it does raise eyebrows. And then there's the question, why China? 
Why would a promising European technology shift development to China? Well, it actually makes sense. China is the world's largest emitter of CO2, accounting for about 27% of global emissions, but it's also made major commitments to reduce them. The country aims to become carbon neutral by 2060, and modernizing its energy infrastructure is a huge part of that. Plus, China has a massive, fast-growing population and economy, both of which put strain on their power grid. Energy storage is critical to keeping that system stable, especially as more renewable energy comes online. And while transparency in Chinese projects is often limited, it's not necessarily a red flag. It's just how things tend to work there. That said, Energy Vault hasn't had a smooth ride. In late 2022, the company came under fire from a short seller, a type of investor who bets on a company's stock going down. The short seller accused Energy Vault of inflating its business outlook and making questionable deals. The CEO denied the claims, saying their projections were backed by solid contracts and strong customer interest. Still, their stock has taken a big hit. Whether the allegations are true or not, investor confidence has clearly been shaken. And when combined with the lack of transparency around the battery project, it creates an unsettling picture. Financial challenges aside, there are practical hurdles too. Gravity batteries require massive upfront investments. Even if their operating costs are low, the initial construction costs can be a barrier to widespread adoption. The company estimates their current cost is around $500 per kilowatt hour of installed capacity. That's a lot higher than lithium ion batteries, which are now down to about $150 per kilowatt hour and used to be around $600 a decade ago. Energy Vault hopes that larger scale systems will drive down costs by at least 30%. That would help, but it still wouldn't close the gap entirely. What might tip the scales is durability. Unlike chemical batteries, gravity systems don't wear out as quickly. That could make them more cost-effective over the long term. I also raised questions about what those cost figures include. Just materials? Installation? Maintenance? Again, I reached out to the company but didn't get a reply. And speaking of maintenance, let's talk about that. You've got thousands of 25-ton blocks being lifted and lowered every day. The stress and friction on the system's moving parts must be enormous. I can't imagine you wouldn't need frequent servicing and part replacements. This could drive up long-term costs and complexity. Finally, there's the aesthetics. In places like Germany, where people are often very conscious of their local environment, a 145-meter tall battery tower might not be welcome, especially in areas without other tall structures. We've seen similar pushback with wind and solar farms. Public opinion matters. So where does all of this leave us? Despite the unanswered questions and criticisms, I still think the core idea behind gravity batteries is brilliant. It's elegant. It's rooted in basic physics. And sometimes simple ideas are the most powerful, especially when they reduce complexity and lower the chances of failure. Plus, diversifying our energy storage technologies is critical. We've learned the hard way that relying too heavily on a single solution can backfire. Having multiple approaches, chemical, mechanical, thermal, and more, creates a more resilient energy grid. Energy Vault now has competition too. A Scottish company called Gravitricity is working on a similar concept, but using old mine shafts. Instead of building towers, they use the depth of existing mines to lift and lower heavy weights. It's a smart idea, especially in regions with a mining history like Germany's Ruhr area. I actually made a video about that project too. Feel free to check it out. In the end, I believe gravity-based energy storage has enormous potential. It's efficient, eco-friendly, and scalable. But it still needs to prove itself, especially at scale and in real-world conditions. We need more transparency, more independent testing, and more public accountability. Only then will we know whether it's the energy solution of the future or just a well-meaning experiment. What do you think? Would you welcome a gravity battery in your neighborhood? Do you think this technology will go mainstream or is it destined to stay niche? I'm genuinely curious. Let me know in the comments. And if you found this video informative, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you never miss an update.